1.1.3 Exercise and fitness as part of your healthy active lifestyle Part 1 Health, exercise, fitness and performance In this topic, we'll be looking at the following The definitions for health, exercise, fitness and performance And then, how the four terms are linked together So then, the first of these definitions What is exercise? So exercise is a form of physical activity done to improve one's health and fitness. So it's important to understand that exercise is not the same as sport. Exercise can be any physical activity, even just going for a short walk, whereas sport tends to be competitive in some way or another. It's recommended that we exercise at least three times a week, and this exercise should last for at least 20 minutes, during which our heart rate should be raised significantly. So when we are exercising, like it says, you've got to make sure it lasts at least 20 minutes. But the key thing is, you've got to be left in a feeling of being hot and sweaty and you know, a sense of breathlessness. Otherwise, you've probably not been working hard enough and that exercise will have had no benefit on your health and fitness. Next definition we need to know then is, what is health? So health is a state of complete mental, physical and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Now this is a, a definition which you should already know um, having looked at it at previous topics in this syllabus. So the key things to remember here are the mental, physical and social aspects of health Okay, and not just thinking well I've not got an illness, I'm not sick therefore I must be healthy. Good health comes from the following Eating sensibly, so making sure we're taking the right uh, nutrients on board. Coping with stress. Limiting alcohol intake, so making sure everything is in moderation. Regular physical exercise, as we would expect. Regular rest and sleep, which gives our body the chance to recover from anything we put it through. And finally, not smoking or taking drugs, so not putting any chemicals in our body that's going to cause it any harm. So then, what would you expect somebody who has good health to look like? Just wait to pause the video and have a few minutes to think about that particular question. So then, someone with good health. First of all, let's look at their physical well-being. So cardiovascular and respiratory systems work well. So those uh, are referring to our heart, our blood and our blood vessels, and then our lungs. So things that are connected with oxygen, get into our, our muscles, carbon dioxide, coming from our muscles and being exhaled. We expect to have a strong muscular system, so not necessarily someone who, you know, who would be a massive heavyweight boxer who'd have really big muscles, but just a muscular system that looks healthy and would be able to get them through any activities that they need to. They would also be expected to have a good body shape, and we can all picture in our heads what a good body shape looks like, but for a man and a woman, and they can resist and recover from illness. Mental well-being. If we look at this, we think of somebody who can cope with the stresses of everyday life through leisure, interest and relaxing. And somebody who's in control of their emotions. Social well-being. And we can consider things like developing friendships and personal relationships. And feeling good about ourselves with a good self-esteem. So then, next definition is what is fitness. Fitness is defined as the ability to meet the demands of the environment. Okay, and fitness isn't something that's just exclusive to sport, it's something we need in everyday life. Whether it be running for a bus, uh, carrying shopping bags back from, from Tesco, uh, having the flexibility to, to run up the stairs. You know, so it's not just something that you associate with football or netball, it's something we need in everything we do in everyday life. Fitness is developed through exercise and contributes to enhanced performance. So, I'm pretty sure we all understand that the more exercise, the fitter we get. But that increased fitness level will also have a positive, positive impact on our performance. So then, fitness means different things to different people. Okay, And the question I want to think about is, is a sumo wrestler fit? So I've got a picture of a sumo wrestler there. Do you think he is fit?
Let's have a few minutes to think about that then. Typically we think of people like marathon runners as being fit, but they are also unfit for sumo wrestling as the demands for this activity are different. So we said that fitness is being able to meet the demands of the environment. So for a marathon runner, their demands of the environment is to be able to run 26.1 miles. So they'll be relying on their endurance to keep the legs moving for you know, two, three, four hours on end. Whereas the demands for a sumo wrestler, okay, they need to, to be big and strong in order to push their opponent out of the ring. So if we think about the question, is a sumo wrestler fit? Then yeah, they are, they are fit for the sport of sumo wrestling. But they would not be fit for other sports that would have these different demands in their environment. So we've got a picture there of the sumo wrestler playing football. His fitness, okay, his uh, his size, his characteristics of his, of his body would not be suited to any other demands of the environment from any other sport apart from sumo. Next question. Do you think it is possible to be fit but not healthy? So again, pause the video, give yourself a bit of time to think about this. Is it possible to be fit but not healthy? Many athletes can be deemed as fit but suffer from illness or injury. So, in answer to the question, it is possible to be fit but not actually be deemed as healthy. Okay? And the reason being this illness and injury or athletes can adopt an unhealthy lifestyle. So we've got a picture of Sir Steve Redgrave there, who had diabetes, that was an illness that, that he suffered from. Uh, in the middle, we've got a, a colleague of mine who we used to play football with, who, as you can see, suffered a nasty injury. So even though he was fit for football, he's you know he's not healthy now because he's got that, that broken limb. And then we've got a darts player on the forum, okay, and, and you know, the picture speaks for itself who was severely overweight because of the amount of alcohol and amount of food he consumed. But for the sport of darts, he was absolutely brilliant. Okay, he was, you know, he's won many a tournament, so he was fit for his demands of that sport. Okay, final definition then. What is performance? Performance, quite simply, is how well a task is completed. Okay, and levels of performance differ widely from competing at the World Cup to playing in a local league. If you have a good performance, you feel satisfied and successful, and everybody's idea of a good performance varies. Okay? So, me playing football uh, at the weekend for my team, if I've had a good performance, it's usually because I'm not giving the ball away that much, you know, I might be able to take a player on, made a few good passes, but if I compare that to Steven Gerrard playing for Liverpool, we'd be absolute leagues apart. Okay? So what Steven Gerrard classes as a good performance for him is totally different to what is a good performance for me. Okay then, we said we're also going to look at how these four terms link together. Okay, and they can be summarised really simply in this sentence. So something improves something and develops something which enhances something in physical activities. Okay, I want you to... Fill in the gap with the four words at the bottom. And this is what you should get. So exercise improves health and develops fitness, which enhances performance in physical activities. So pretty straightforward. If you exercise, you exercise efficiently, it's going to improve your health, it's going to develop your fitness, and the positive side effect is that your performance is going to get better in your, the sport of your choice. Okay, what now? Well, I want you to rewatch this video as many times as you need to so that you'll fully understand the topic and in particular you're able to learn those four definitions and you know them off by heart. Then I want you to fill in all the boxes on your flip learning mat so don't leave any, any out. And as usual, you apply the knowledge you've learnt from this video in next week's lesson.